After reading No Trace by David Madden and looking through the presentation, I've chosen three questions that I'd like to talk a little bit more about. The first question is, why does Ernest go to his son's dorm room? I think the simplest explanation for this is that he was in search of something. And then I think that there are three major categories of things that he was searching for. The first one is an explanation. And I think this is the initial reaction of anyone who has gone through a traumatic event, such as what Ernest has been through, is that they can't quite comprehend what's just happened and so they try to search for why. They really want a logical explanation or a reason behind what's happened because the kind of the horror or the gruesomeness of the things that have happened they just can't quite comprehend and so they really want a reason I think is um, um, the, the initial reason why he goes to his son's dorm room. Uh, the second reason um, is in search of justification for his son. He doesn't want to believe that his son could do something so awful, and so he's looking for something to blame, I think. He wants to blame Gordon's roommate or the pressures of college, or he's he's looking for literally anything that would take Gordon out of what he'd done. He didn't want his son to, to have been able to do something so terrible. Um, and finally, I don't think he was looking for this initially, but I think he ended up looking for it was um, an understanding of who his son had become. As he was searching through Gordon's things, he, he understood that he no longer recognized the person Gordon had become. And he says that he'd like to understand this new person. And so I think he kind of gave up on the explanation or the justification. And it became more about understanding this new this new Gordon, as well as trying to save the memory of him as he he takes as much evidence I guess he would call it as he can to kind of save his son's image I guess um the second question is what is Ernest's relationship with his son like and I think that this is one of the most relatable aspects of the story because hopefully um, a lot of people haven't been through such a traumatic event as the one that occurred in the story. But um, this this relationship dynamic between father and son, I think, is, is a lot more relatable to a much wider audience. Um, Ernest um, admits to not recognizing who Gordon has become. And I think that this is really common in relationships between fathers and sons, is that the father is kind of stuck with the image of who his son was as a child. And as the son gets older, they no longer recognize who they become. And I think one of the saddest parts of the story are the letters that Ernest finds where Gordon tries to reach out to him, but he can never finish his the letter or let alone send them. And I think that that speaks to a much wider or broader issue between relationships between fathers and sons is that the, the son wants to reach out to their father and they just they just don't know quite how to. I think that's one of the saddest parts of the story. And then um, the last thing I'd like to talk about is perspective. So we get this story from the perspective of Ernest after the event has occurred and as he's dealing with the initial shock and acceptance of what's happened. I think that if we got the story from from anyone else's perspective, it would it would really change the story and how we perceive it. I think that if Gordon were able to tell the story, we'd be able to understand a little better and it we wouldn't have to speculate as much about the the reasons why. Um and I think that that would happen with any kind of change in perspective is that we'd understand it from a different point of view and be able to kind of understand it or maybe sympathize or empathize with whoever is telling the story. But I think that the author chose to tell the story from Ernest's perspective because he wanted the audience to see it from, from his point of view.